Hey, it's Lucas, and uh, we're going to do a little math today. Sorry about that. I actually like math. Statistics in particular, which is what I'm going to look at. So i got some data here. Let's take a look. Uh, really what I'm trying to do is find out what errors are introduced by using these bore gauges or these uh, you know, so intermediary means of measurement uh, of the interference fit between a bore and a shaft. In this case it's a shaft off of a uh, Hera grinder and a uh, bearing for the same. So uh, I got a bunch of data here and I took 20 data points <clears throat> and I used uh, this nice uh, quantum mic. So both measurements, both sets of measurements were made with the same instrument, this guy. And this by the way has resolution down to uh, 0. 0.00005 inches. What's Times ten, it's five times ten to the minus fifth inches. <clears throat> so, I got a bunch of data on the shaft. I took twenty data points both ways. So, twenty data points on the bore, uh, and then twenty data points on the shaft. The only difference being that uh, you know that instrument, this guy, can't measure a bore directly. So I used these guys. In fact, I used. The one that's out of that pocket, I used this guy. So, you know, right off the bat, I want you to know that I used uh, an American manufactured uh, gauge, probably from the 70s or 80s. It's properly radiused. Uh, and, uh, you know, I did my best to uh, maintain the uh, uh, verticality or the normalcy of uh, of this to the... Uh, to the uh, and I'll just call it the axial parallelism, really, between this shaft and what would be the the axis of the bore in the bearing. Okay, so uh, we can break this down into two components: one, a a rocking, uh, where if you if you're not vertical, you're going to get an excessively large measurement, and uh, if you're off in the uh, direction like this, in other words, if you're you're not exactly at the center of the bore you're going to get a excessively small very uh, measurement and we're not talking huge differences but I'm just gonna tell you that the uh, data show that uh, adding the intermediary of the telescope engaged really is a uh, is a detriment to your accuracy of your measurement so uh, I'm just gonna go up here we're gonna take a look at the actual contents of this cell so if we look here this says the uh, bore with the telescoping gauge. So that's the column of measurements of the bore with the telescoping gauge. And uh, this one is the shaft the uh, shaft uh, measured directly off the micrometer. Okay, So the these guys are the blue data over here and this column is the red data over here. So uh, you can see the red data were fun fantastic. I mean we're, we're talking, uh, you know, I had an average of 0.943 and a standard deviation of uh, 4.4 times 10 to the minus fifth, or about exactly what the resolution of the micrometer is. So uh, out of 20 data points, we had very, very good uh, measurement. On the other hand, with this guy, once we put the telescoping gauge in there as an intermediary system for uh, assisting with the measurement, our, our standard deviation jumped up by almost exactly a factor of 10. In other words, it's the, the scatter on the data are 10 times worse. By the way, I've trimmed out uh, the minimum and two of the maximum uh, data points. So I'm going to put those back in, and we'll see what the effect is on the standard deviation here. So if we just move this column over, I'm just going to put that back in here and go up here. So what we now have, instead of 0 .004 down here, is 0 .006, uh, 0 .006 rather. So we're at, uh, you know, we're we're at about 15 times the the variability of of the system without the uh, telescope engage in it. So, in other words, the telescope engage is a is a necessary evil. I I don't have a bore gauge. I don't have a bore micrometer, so I have to use this, but it. It's not good. 
uh, it's it's uh, it ruins the uh, it ruins the consistency of your measurement. And by the way, I should point out that even with a, a micrometer that would not measure to the uh, you know to the that last place in the fifth position there, the least significant uh, digit. Uh, I would expect to see the same the same variability. In fact, I did look at it with rounding these off, and I I would point out too that if the data don't show a fifth digit of data, uh, and, and they don't in a lot of cases, that's because the the actual digit ended with a zero, or the uh, you know the the value ended with the zero in the least significant digit, and when you enter the data in Excel, it truncates the the data just drops that last zero. So the last zero is in, implicit in anything that doesn't have a five in the fifth position or doesn't even show a fifth position. So everything that's got a five in it like this uh, in the least significant bit or a digit, that, that actually was a reading right off the micrometer. This one here would have been 0 0.98430. So 0 0.98450, blah, blah, blah. So you get the idea. So anyway, and if we look here at the uh, the histogram, so, so this is actual histogram of the blue data, uh, the telescoping gauge. Uh, you know, we've got, I, I have a suspicion that there's something else going on here, but I don't have enough data and enough time to do it all. But uh, I, I don't want to tip my hand on it. But anyway, there's, the, the mean is, uh, the, the main value is a, around this 0.984, and uh, the mean value here is 0.9847. That's the bore. The uh, value that I'm measuring for the shaft is 0.9843, which is also interesting because the uh, the shaft and the uh, and the and the bearing actually did fit together nicely, which is about what you'd expect with these two numbers. The the, the mean of the blue data uh, would definitely be lower than the mean of the red data. So that tells me that I did get something useful out of it, but I, I'm just real hesitant to say that adding that telescope engage is doing anything except really hurting your data measurement. Also, uh, here's the here's the spread. So this is the max. Uh, we can see that's the max out of this data set for the blue, the telescope engage data, and here's the min out of the data set for the blue. So. Uh, our max minus min is actually pretty big. <clears throat> it's uh, two thousandths, two and a half thousandths. So uh, two and a half thousandths of difference in something that you're measuring where you want to get down to one thousandths, uh, that two and a half thousandths is really disconcerting. So again, I would recommend some other means of measuring a bore other than using a telescoping gauge. <coughs> All right, well, hey, this is Lucas with, uh, you know, my professorial hat on today. Hey, signing off.